Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany and today I am bringing you this Corpse Bride transformation. Let's be honest, go and get out of the way. Emily absolutely deserved so much better. Am I right? I was not expecting to be absolutely heartbroken whenever I watched the film for the first time. But yeah, here we are. I think she's a gem and she is one of my first attempts of doing like some body painting. This is actually a live stream that I did over a year ago, but I thought what better a time to bring this back, edit it down, do a nice little voiceover tutorial moment for you guys than Halloween. So that is what we are doing today. Going back and watching this was honestly pretty wild because there's already a lot of things that I would do differently. Um, but nonetheless, I still wanted to show you guys how I originally did it and hopefully I can give you a couple of like tips and tricks that I've learned since then. I did stream this live on twitch.tv forward slash tales of tea love. I am still streaming makeup over there, but I am planning on starting my little streaming journey over on YouTube. I will have my gaming YouTube channel linked down below and then eventually I plan to move my makeup streams to the channel that you are on. So let me know if that's something that interests you. Make sure that you subscribe so that way you will be notified whenever I do go live. And let me know what you think my first makeup live stream should be in the YouTube space. Let me know, let me know. So you just saw me showing off my little veil crown <laughs> moment that I made. I made that using a really thin hairband and then some purple flowers that I got from Michaels and some tulle and I just hot glued all of that together. And then I also went ahead and showed you guys my wig from Rockstar Wigs. I love their wigs. I think they are so fantastic, especially for the price you pay. The one that I used for this was a lace front and it wasn't horrifically expensive, but we will talk more about those at the very end. Let's get started in the makeup, shall we? Just look at my hair back. I'm going to take a cotton ball and a little bit. And when I say little bit, I mean just like such a minuscule amount of 91% alcohol on that cotton ball. I'm gonna be really, really careful. I am going over my eyebrows with this and then also on a little patch of my skin where I'm going to be using liquid latex a little bit later. The reason I'm being so specific with it and the reason I'm using it anyways is because I'm wanting to get rid of the oil in those spots particularly because I am blocking out my brows and then because I am going to be building a gash with liquid latex later and by putting a little bit of that on the area where I will be applying the liquid latex that's going to help it adhere versus if I just like let my natural oils do their thing um, it's more likely that that will pop off and my natural oils will kind of break that down. This is not a beauty hack. Please do not rub this all over your face. You do not need to be breathing this in. You don't want to get it in your eyes. You don't want to get it in your mouth. Um, again, I please be careful. That is why I'm saying to use little droplets of the alcohol and you don't want to drench it because otherwise it's going to get in your eyeball. You're going to need to go to the hospital. It's going to be a whole thing. So like, guys, be safe. To ensure your safety, you know, maybe just don't. But moving on from our disclaimers, now it's time for the brows. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not the absolute best with blocking out brows, uh, particularly on myself. I have an easier time blocking other people's brows the few times that I've done it so far, but on myself, there's usually one brow that doesn't give me any trouble, and then the other one is like, nah, I don't wanna lay down today. And you know what, I respect that. We love a go get them attitude. Um, maybe just not whenever I'm wanting to block my brows though. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the steps that I take is I'll go in with my Elmer's glue stick. I use the purple one just so that way I can literally see whenever it's dry, it'll turn translucent. And with the glue stick, I am first going to apply that basically like I'm applying a brow product, just going like with the same way that my hair is growing, but then I'll go back and I will rub it in backwards. That way I'm getting the glue on the underside of the individual brow hair. Once I'm happy with the amount of glue that I've applied, I'll take my little spatula, smooth out the edges. You can dip that in a little bit of water. Um, if you feel like you do have too much product and that'll kind of help blend that in with the rest of your skin. And I'll do this a few times, uh, making sure that it dries in between each layer. Once each layer is dry, then I take a cosmetic wedge sponge and some translucent setting powder and just pack that on the brow to seal it. I think I ended up going in with this rotation three separate times to get the brows in a place that I was happy with, which means we can move on to the base. 
Something you will hear me say all the time is to use whatever it is that you already have. And that's definitely something that I was doing in this case. I was new to the whole idea of body painting. The only body paint that I had was the Mirai Makeup, just their black body paint that they had. So since that was the case, what I did to create the color that I was wanting, which was just like a very light blue, is I took Marilyn's Clown White Cream Makeup, which you know, it's a product that exists. Uh, do I recommend it? It's not my first choice. Um, and I know that now, didn't know it at the time. I thought it would be just like a good universal cream makeup, which is true, you can you can do a lot with it. Um, but man, oh man, is it a messy, messy, messy time. Um, but I took that and then I took blue liquid lipstick and I just mixed that in a little bowl to get the color that I was wanting. Now what I would recommend, if you are able to, would be to get a white water activated paint, a blue water activated paint, mix those so that way you can get the shade that you desire, and then you just like, you get it on your body. It's really, really fast that way. This definitely took more time, but I will say it's a move up from what my previous solution would have been, which was to take the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Milk and just color that all over my body. Uh, if you've seen my Eyes Are the Window to the Soul uh, NYX Face Award entry that I did many moons ago, you will know what I am talking about. <laughs> I'll link that down below if you guys wanna go check it out. I remember being like so proud of that look too. And I think it's one of those that I'm gonna have to revisit. That was right whenever I was getting into makeup. Um, and the NYX Face Awards, that was like a motivator for me to try to start playing around with creative makeup. Um, it's just kind of crazy how, how things work. But anyways, now that I've rambled, uh, that would be my recommendation, would just, you know, if you're able to, they're about $10, $12 a pan, uh, get yourself some water activated paints. But at the end of the day, use whatever it is that you have. And the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil, to cover my face and chest would probably take about two to three of those pencils. I know for my previous look, I ended up going through, I think two and a half. So, you know, life hack. <laughs> to apply it, I just took this tiny C-shaped brush, mainly because I first went in and applied it on my brows just to make sure that I was happy with the coverage that I was getting for everything. That's the great thing about the clown white makeup is that it is literally designed for clowns. So if you're looking for a full coverage white moment, this is your gal. Like I definitely felt like my brows were covered, good to go. But I worked for my brows out, applying that product as I went around my face with that exact same brush. Uh, I definitely used too much product, but you'll see me kind of tap some of it away with a sponge later. You don't need to go as hardcore as I did. Again, we were learning, we were figuring things out. And then I realized I hadn't applied my liquid latex yet, which I definitely needed to make sure that I did that before I colored the rest of my face. So we're gonna switch lanes real quick and we're gonna talk about how to create a basic gash on your face. This will work uh, for like a lot of different looks, all depending on how you color it. But the basic steps for this, I took liquid latex, I just put a glob of it in a little disposable bowl that I had, and then I took a wooden spatula, dipped it in, and after creating the shape of the gash that I was wanting using an eyebrow pencil, I then take my wooden spatula, with the liquid latex on it and kind of outline that. I started on the outer edges, made sure that they were covered. And then once I was happy with that, I took a little bit more of the liquid latex and I filled in the gash. Once I let that dry, I am building it in just in the center. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna keep my edges nice and smooth out so that way it looks as realistic as possible. But I'm building up the center just because I will be poking into that a little bit later on after I have my base on to be able to actually create what is going to look like a hole in my skin. But this is the first step of that process. And if you've never used liquid latex before, you can see like just a second ago, I was tapping it to make sure that it was actually good, but it does have a little bit of like a yellow opaque tint to it. Um, so that is how you will know just by looking at it that it's good to go for you to go ahead and add that next layer. You have to make sure that it is dry before you go in with the other layer. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a mushy mess and it will never dry slash take forever and then you're just gonna have to like take it off and start over. So yes, make sure that it dries. I ended up going in with like three different layers of that. Once I finished with that and it was dry, I went ahead and I applied the rest of my light blue creamy base, which it definitely looks like it's just white in this lighting. But when you look at the final photos, I promise you, it's light blue. 
promise. Whenever I was doing this look, I had like an idea of what I was wanting to do. And I was basically wanting it to not be a full like character body paint. I didn't want it to be like a real human cosplay of her. I wanted it to be like somewhere in between. Can you hear Ripley scratching herself in the background? Probably. Oh, she just peaced out. She said, you called me out on the internet. How dare you? <laughs> All of that to say, I was kind of making things up as I went. Uh, so when it came to her neck, you saw me go back and forth with, a, I was like, how the heck do I want to do this? I did ultimately decide that I wanted to give my first go at creating a little illusion of my body. Uh, so here you see me playing around with that same cream paint, the liquid lipstick mixture that I created and trying to figure out how to make my neck not crooked. So basically it was just applying the product and then I chiseled it down using a cotton pad and some, did I use alcohol? I might have, yeah, based on the redness, I have very reactive skin. <laughs> based on the redness, I'm pretty sure that I had a little bit of 91% alcohol on there to uh, to shape up the neck. If you're like super, super talented or, or big brain, uh, you could always like sketch it out and play with it from there instead of just using all that product. But I had so much of the cream paint, I was like, I, I don't mind. Because I do have a pretty short and stubby neck, I did bring that down pretty low. About where my actual collarbone is, slash like right below it, is where I started her shoulders. And then once I created the general shape, I just brought that down. I did realize that on one of her little arms, it's just, it's just a little skeleton. There was no skin left. I was gonna say it was a no bones day, but I guess that means it, it would be a bones day because there was a singular bone. If you know, you know. Go follow Noodle the Pug on, on TikTok. He's, he's a precious little bean. Anyways, you can't really see like below my shoulders because of how my webcam frame was and also how my webcam angle was, but I am just continuing Emily's body down on my chest. I was considering like creating the dress, but this ended up being a really long stream. So rather than doing the little simple dress, I just like took it down to her cleavage and then I held uh, some extras of the flowers that I had to act as her bouquet. Then to finish the base for the body, she does have one of her arms that is just a bone. So I chiseled that out. Out, like I was talking about earlier, but you get to see me do it here. For her contour, I used the same blue liquid lipstick I was using earlier. It is the shade Jet Blue from NYX Cosmetics. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, I do apologize. Um, but I am using that on a literal paintbrush to chisel everything out. I am contouring myself like I would normally do like a regular contour, but I'm doing it more drastic. So I'm bringing my cheekbones even higher than I normally would, but then also I'm extending it down pretty drastically, shaping out my mouth, making everything look a little bit more sunk in since she is the undead. The most intense contouring that I did was definitely for my cheekbones, my jawline, and then I really exaggerated my nose to make it longer and skinnier. All of the other contouring that I did was pretty general. Then to make sure that that blends in with my base, I just took a cosmetic wedge, folded it, and pounced it lightly and delicately on the skin. Now it's time to add the shadows on Zibabi. So first I'm creating the illusion that I have my little my little clavicle buddies and I'm just bringing that into the top of the rib cage, having it come to a point just like hers does. Uh, I really focus in on that. You can kind of see it here, but I just take my time building that up. I go in with a good bit of product, then I blend it out using the brush. Sometimes I'll even go with my finger and like dab it out a little bit if it gets too intense. Uh, but then I also go around the edges of her body so that way it, it again is going to create the illusion of a shadow. It makes it look like my neck is not just a flat surface but that it actually exist in real life. I'm not doing a great job explaining this and I'm very, very sorry about that. But you can kind of, you can kind of see, you kind of get it, right? You kind of get it, you kind of get what's going on. We're just giving actual dimension to everything. And using the exact same brush, I take a little bit of my original base mixture and I am just blending that around the edges to make sure that I don't have any really harsh lines. Once I'm happy with that, it's time to set everything with the translucent setting powder and a fluffy brush. And then on the areas that I feel like we're creasing a little bit more. I went in with a white eyeshadow on a cosmetic wedge and I'm using this to highlight like underneath my eyes, my forehead. So it helps brighten everything, but it also is going to help set those uh, so they're not creasing as much on my, on my little face. 
base. With the base on and everything set, that means that we can jump back to our little gash, which is now covered with everything. To make it look like we have a gash, you're going to take your little spatula. Um, I recommend going in with something that isn't super, super sharp, so that way you don't accidentally stab yourself. Um, but you're going to be using the end of that to tear into the center of the liquid latex build that you did earlier on. It's usually the most difficult to get like the first little like entry point, but then once you have that, it's more or less smooth sailing. Uh, I recommend tearing away less than you think that you want to, so that way you don't end up tearing off the entire prosthetic. But first you're just gonna go in, make the initial gash, and then once you have a little bit of an opening, you can kind of play with it from there. Because Emily is like rotting away, uh, I really wanted this to be very, very PC. Once I'm happy with the jaggedness of everything, jaggedness? That's a word. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm gonna take the Maron water activated paint uh, it's just the shade black and I'm going to use that to fill in the hole. Once everything underneath the gash is filled in, I then take my same brush that I was using earlier. I don't have any additional product on it outside of just like the base that was already on there. And I'm just rubbing that on the outside to ensure that anything that is supposed to be where I still have skin, I'm just ensuring that all of that is still covered and actually looks like the color of the skin rather than having little flakes of black on it. And I also make sure that I'm getting like the underside of the little flaps that I have now of my little gash opening. How many times can I say little? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, it's just also a little so tiny, um, but it makes sure that all that is covered too. Now for her brows. For this, I ended up using my Maybelline Black is Black Gel Liner, but I think I actually would have had an easier time using something more fluid like the black water activated paint that I had. I think that just because I was new to that, that the idea of using that made me really nervous and I felt more comfortable using makeup products just because for the longest time I was just using makeup products, I didn't have you know any of like these more like special effects body painting things in my kit yet even with that though it would have been better like using a liquid eyeliner and then covering the brush that i wanted to use with that product just because that would have had more of a flow to it so for you i would recommend using an eyeliner or a water activated paint or even like a liquid lipstick or something would have been better so that way you can have like the night nice artsy flow to it i am using this angled eyeliner brow brush from ColourPop cosmetics and I start the beginning of the brow right above where my natural brow is. Where you were gonna place this on your face, I mean, it depends on the shape of your face, but this is what ended up working for me. I started with the front of the brow because I wanted to make sure that I got that little curvature down and uh, let this be a friendly reminder to you that eyebrows are sisters. They are not twins <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> I was the most nervous about these and I think that they ended up okay um again this is another area that I would have done a little bit differently but you know what you live and you learn what can you do and I will say even with all of that if you can make sure that the two front swoop parts of the brow are more or less even it will trick the human eye into thinking that the rest of the brows look okay which i think is kind of what happened here and you know what i'll take it so if you find yourself struggling try not to stress too much no one's gonna notice how crooked the brows are compared to how much you'll notice it's all gonna be okay once i had the initial guideline for each one then i went in and thickened them up at this point, I really need some balance in my life, so I went ahead and I moved on to the lip. I removed the base makeup from the center of my mouth, and then I went in with ColourPop's lip liner in the shade BFF, and then used MAC Cosmetics Please Me Matte Lipstick. I used the BFF liner, so that way I would kind of have a little bit more of a nude base, because the Please Me lipstick is pretty, pretty pink, and I still wanted there to be like a hint of nude in there, so I really liked the pairing of these two. To extend my mouth, I kept it really simple and I just used an eyeliner brush with some blue eyeshadow and drew lines extending from the corner of each side of my mouth. For my eyes, I used the classic NYX Cosmetic Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Milk. I put that in my waterline and then I used the NYX Cosmetics Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Black Bean for my tight line. The reason that I do this is because I'm wanting my eyes to look as open as possible. So that's why I have the white down on the bottom and then I'm using the black on the top. So that way it kind of helps in rounding it out. This will also help my false lashes to blend with my real lashes a little bit later on. And then for the eyeshadow, I just use one eyeshadow. I used a deep blue eyeshadow and I use a few different brushes to be able to get 
the rounded out, blown out result that I was wanting for her. I first used a super fluffy eye brush, and for this, I'm basically going around the perimeter of my eye socket. So I'm bringing it up above on my brows uh, that we blocked out earlier, and then also down below, so that way I'm really making these look hollow, but also just making my eye look overall bigger. Once I'm happy with my base shape for that, I'm then taking the C shape packer brush with the same blue eyeshadow, and I am packing that all on my eyelid and bringing it up because again, since we are creating a new eye for myself here, I'm basically creating a new eyelid in this step. Once I have all of that product down, I'm taking a tiny pointed fluffy blending brush to blend out those edges. I make sure that my new eyelid is blended out as well as my new lash line. I then go in again with my white eye pencil to make sure that my under eye is nice and bright because the next step is taking again the blue eyeshadow but now on a definer brush and we are officially permanently not permanently but you know you know for the drama um actually defining that new bottom lash line everything before we were just using the fluffy brushes and now this is the final step to uh really bring that final layer of dimension and bring our new eye sockets forward. I brighten up my waterline and my under eye one more time before smoking all of this out again. I decided her eye sockets were not big enough, and so we really smoke, smoke, smoke it out, hardcore, live our best life. It's a good time. Did you notice the change in my voice? You probably did. It's a new day. It was getting late and I found myself whispering. Even though I was like trying to still speak up, it just, there was still a soft whisper. So what's up? It's your girl, loud and proud. How can I help you? Okay, so now that the eyeshadow is done, I'm taking the same fluffy blending brush that I was using for my eyeshadow and I'm running that down my nose to add a powder contour, making that a little bit more intense. This is one of the final steps, so I feel like this is really where it all starts to come together. I liked using this blending brush because I was able to be pretty specific with the product, but I could also blend it out with ease, which was really nice. I feel like I'm losing some of like my lighter shade and my highlights, then to bring some of that back, I just use a cosmetic wedge sponge fold it again so that way it's rounded and then pounce that along to kind of clean everything up. After doing that, then I'll go in with a white eyeshadow and a little bullet point brush and I'll use that to highlight. Uh, so I went down the bridge of my nose, the very tip of my nose, just anywhere that I really wanted to like pack a punch with my whites and my highlights. Same thing with those, I used my fluffy brush and I wasn't really specific about where I placed it. I tried to keep it more on the un underside so that way it looked like there was like a little bit of a shadow there, uh, but I kind of rubbed it all over the brow just so that way it would blend, look a little bit more realistic. And then I would go in with a black eyeshadow to make sure that I kept the intensity of the color of the brow. Then using a pointed face blending brush, I'm going in and really chiseling out and really deepening my contour. I made sure to put this in the place where the shadows would be the deepest. So right near my ears, like right along my temple, all along my jawline. Then after sharpening all of that up, I move on to the body, which again, this is where this little section really comes to life because we have like our, our cream bases down, but now this is when we can get a little bit more specific. Same dealio, I'm switching through those same three to four brushes and my little sponge. I go in and I make sure to extend the shadows down the neck, all around like my shoulders, well, my new fake shoulders, <laughs> um, just to make sure that it looks a little bit more rounded. Again, it, it that's what brings, how many times can I say dimension in this? But that's just literally what's happening. The biggest thing with the contour is that I'm not keeping all the product in one space. I'm really blending that out and making sure that it fades, especially like for like my collarbone. I made sure that at the top of my rib cage, that's where it's the deepest because that's where the shadow would be the deepest. You can kind of see how again in the center, I'm keeping it the darkest and then kind of blending it out from there. Um, and then with it, it was really just using mainly that eyeshadow brush and then my fingers. And the cool thing with this look is I really didn't have to do anything super crazy. I was able to keep it to like some pretty standard little basics. And even though I would say that this is not the best example of using light and shadows when you're doing body painting, I still think that it worked out once we did like the black on the outline. So you definitely do not have to be a pro to be able to do this look. 
I am exhibit A of that. It's now time for moss. I do that after my highlights and contours are done just because the moss would naturally be above like the real life shadows and whatnot. So Emily, AKA the Corpse Bride, she has the moss kind of like where her hair splits, but more off to her right. And then she has it around her little gash. So for that, I have a dry sponge from Michaels that I tore little bits off of to be able to create some texture. And I'm using blue liquid lipstick and a green liquid lipstick to be able to create the moss. With this, I would say my biggest advice is like less is more. Cause if you go like too heavy handed, that's gonna be kind of like doing edit undo on like your entire base, which you are looking at the queen of doing too much always. <laughs> and on that note, I didn't put any on her chest. I completely forgot. I should have done some like around her collarbone and so for that you would just use the same technique. Really fun if you took like some actual fake moss and use like some eyelash glue or prosade and on top of the little spots that you added with the liquid lipstick, if you glued that to yourself, again, using prosade or, or lash glue that would be really fun and bring some texture i just didn't have any but that yeah i would i would recommend that once i'm happy with how my shadows and highlights are looking then we are going to move on to the lashes i just went ahead and i used black mascara pretty standard i honestly do not remember what lashes i used for this look and i am so sorry i did not tag them in my original post and I, I don't know i don't know why i didn't do that i'm so sorry but what i will say is if i had some really cool super long lashes that would have taken this look to the next level that's the one thing with this look that i remember being really bummed about is that i didn't have like some really cool kid lashes but I do have a recommendation for you guys now because now I know a place where you can get some. Hex Baby Beauty Cosmetics. They have the most beautiful like fairy looking lashes. They're so fun. I have some upcoming looks using them and I love them. And what's even cooler is I now have a code with them. So if you use the code TLOVE, you're gonna get an additional 10% off your purchase. The lashes in particular that I was talking about, they have like a few different styles so you can pick the one that's gonna be best for you, but they're only like 14 bucks, which is absolutely absolutely insane. And then you can use code TLOVE to save yourself even more money. But yeah, make sure that you go do that. I'm really, really excited. This is not sponsored by them at all. I just found out like a couple of hours ago that they approved me to be a part of their affiliate program. So I'm really excited and wanted to share with you guys. And it's the first time that I have an affiliate code where I can like make a little bit of money if you guys use that code. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of fresh to death. No pressure to get those though. As you saw, I was able to use just some lashes that I already had and it still worked with the look, but having some really cool, long, Tim Burton-esque, Whoville style kind of lashes would just really, that would take this to the next level. So 10 out of 10, recommend those. Something fun that I did for this look was I added bottom lashes, but not actually where my real bottom lashes are. I added it where my new fake eye would be. This is just an extra thing that you can do to kind of cheat your eyes taking up a lot more space than they actually are. So apply it, same thing like I do on my lashes. I just took some lash glue. Once I decided exactly how I wanted them placed and the glue was sticky, I just applied them on my cheek. We have officially made it to the final step. Well, like for makeup purposes, this is the final step. You're going to take a black water activated paint and I start off by going around the edges and outlining everything that we have done so far. The reason I go ahead and I do this first with a smaller brush is to make sure that I don't accidentally like swipe some of that black body paint onto the white. This way it's just kind of like a little bit of a safety for me. I sketch out around the bone, my little arm. Once I have the outline down, then I just go ahead, go crazy. I fill in the rest. Then I set everything with a black eyeshadow and the Real Techniques foundation brush. Once this is done, it is time for the wig. I'm using this wig cap that has an opening on both sides. This is still one of my favorite wig cap styles to this day because I have long hair, so I can just scoop it all in, twist it up. It's like nothing ever happened. And then for the wig, I had planned on curling it, but this stream was like seven hours, I think is what it ended up being. It was really long. Um, so I didn't end up curling it, but I still felt like it worked for the look. But this wig is from Rockstar Wigs. It is a lace front. I just applied that. If you find that you have some of those hairs kind of going rogue, you can just take a mascara wand and kind of flick them out. Um, if you find yourself fighting some of your own hairs or the hairs of the wig. And now for the actual final step. This is it guys. I'm gonna pop on my little DIY veil flower crown moment. Pop that on and we did it. <laughs> I was shocked. I really thought this was gonna be a complete fail, but I think in the end, 
I think that we managed to end up doing some kind of fun cross between like a body paint, cartoony, but still glam kind of vibe. And I know it took a lot of steps, but I really do stand by the fact that you don't have to be a pro. You really don't have to have a whole lot of knowledge of makeup and you can do this for yourself. So if you've ever wanted to be the corpse bride, now is your moment. If this tutorial was helpful for you, please make sure to tag me in any recreations that you would do. I always love seeing what you guys create. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. This video was so freaking long. So if you made it to the end, like it's good for you. You look happy and healthy. Not me, if you ever cared to ask, JK. I'm actually doing okay right now. That's not what we're talking about. Anyways, <laughs> near to the end of the video. Uh, what's your favorite Olivia Rodrigo song? Let me know. <laughs> if you liked this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe. I have two Halloween videos coming out every week the entire month of October. And then after that, I will have weekly videos popping up here for you guys. So get ready for them. I have a couple of giveaways coming up. So yeah, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss it. You can check out all my other links in the bio. I'm on Fan House now, Instagram, Twitter. If you haven't seen my other videos yet, I'm going to link a playlist of all of the Halloween tutorials I am doing this month right up in the corner. I'm also gonna have it linked down below. Let me know what look you think I'm gonna be posting next and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye guys!